yeah, getting right into this thing, how would you describe what the peace build is all about? So the peace build is just an effort to build human character in all levels of life because there are basic things that we have mystified or basic things that we're doing wrong that's disturbing our natural tranquility across our entire life. And not only is it manifesting in individuals, it's manifesting in our society in the way it's running and it's probably going to not run at some point because there's there's basic integrities that are just not in place. Yeah. So this is just an effort, a small effort for me to distribute information online where people are paying attention to see if people can I'm I'm trying to take my experience of this constant peace and just see how much I can give it to other people. Mm. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Call that a small effort, but I think that's uh it's pretty virtuous. <laughs> Maybe small and subtle, but it's very powerful. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. And it's also fun to teach. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm finding like personal joy in it. And I, I think I have um like you said before we started recording, I have the voice for it. I have yeah. this presence for it so i think maybe if we sign contracts before we end up on earth some whoever put that together was like you're gonna be a teacher i was like yeah all right i'll do it <laughs> 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 gotta go with it yeah 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 so what do you say that we're doing wrong that disturbs this natural tranquility the main thing is just not being in tune with truth that's the main thing. Everything gets disturbed from there. And the main way we do not tell the truth is we we operate from these abstractions. Meaning, for example, the weather outside right now, it could be, I don't know, 80 degrees. The humidity is, I don't know, 70% or whatever the forecast is, is whatever this is. But if you go outside with the natural system you have, the body that you have, and you go outside, you can get the exact temperature of what's happening in that moment. And it's so precise that we can't measure it. We can't record it with a degree. And when we build things from the abstraction, from the degree, we might be able to build things very tall, but it will still be just a little off. And when you're trying to build something, and it doesn't have as much integrity as the ground from where it came from, there's going to be gaps in between the pieces. So we're, we're creating these structures and we're trying to imitate wholeness and the real wholeness of the natural forces is going to recognize that and say, this is lacking integrity. And all it's going to do is send it back to the bottom uh -huh. from where it came. Mm -hmm. And this is happening to so many people. This is happening to businesses. This is happening to countries. And this is just a human um, desire that we have to to make our symbols more important than mm. the actual life. Yeah, what the symbol yeah. stands for. <laughs> exactly. We, we look for what it stands for. And then, because the thing is, we get the initial experience and then we say, okay, let's let's simplify this complex experience and put this in a little symbol. Yeah. And then we forget we made the symbol. And then we say the symbol is more real than the actual experience. Mm -hmm. That's the main problem. Yeah. Yep. It's a bunch of false idols that we've built false up. False idols. Yeah, Even man. the dollar is oh, backed that's... by imagination. Yeah. I'll tell you, that's backed the by... biggest false idol, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be like number one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the whole monetary system, the economy is just a giant hallucination, which is wild. It's crazy. Once you It's crazy. <laughs> if you really do research on what's actually happening, it's like this ain't gonna last too much longer. <laughs> exactly, man. It can't. <laughs> because it can't. Because it's a false foundation. I think you said it something can't. like that. Exactly. You can't build a building on something that is not stable. There's no integrity, as you said. It's a good word, exactly. integrity. What'd you say? Integrity. It's a good word. That's what it is. I mean, it, it's yeah. it's a 
it's a simple word, but you don't hear it too often. But I, I think it should be said a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, so what exactly, when you mean truth, right? We're not in touch with truth. You mean that we're not in touch with this innate, natural way of being human, right? Like there's a sort of, Yes. there's a wavelength and an essence to being human that we're just not aligned with. Would you say Yes, that? Yeah. exactly. Mm. It's um because we, here's the thing, like we live in an information age, right? And what information does is it can give you a sense that you know something and you can actually ignore the actual knowing of it. Yeah. Yeah. And for example, even now I'm looking at you on the screen, like this is all information. These are like ones and zeros, right? Yep. And when I'm looking at it, when I'm perceiving it, I can put myself in a different context than where my body is at and have this vicarious experience of living. And the more people are doing that because it's so exciting, there's so much dopamine involved with it, the more you forget what it's like to just be here and be a human. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the more you use, even the words we use to communicate, the more you put so much attention and importance on the sounds that are coming out of our mouth, or not even that, but just the meaning that's coming out of our mouth, the, the intellectual meaning of it, you can forget that you even have a sound that's coming out of your mouth. Like some people, when they speak, you can tell they're not paying attention to the tone of their voice because it sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. And that, that basic human quality of having a soothing, pleasant voice is something people are ignoring, even though it's it's right there. It's so intimate, Yeah. but that we're we're just overlooking the, this this magical simplicity that we have. Yeah. Magical simplicity. Yes. Yeah. Now, do you think that is the essence of becoming more aligned with? Ourself, it's honing in on our attention, actually paying attention to what this experience is about rather than all of the outward stuff, the infinite Yeah. amount of outward stuff that we have. It's going Yes, within. it's it's like a lot of us have to go back to kindergarten in terms of life. Yeah. People are trying to skip over first grade and going into 12th grade, and it just doesn't work like that. Like Mm every hmm level is just as important as the one that came before it or after it because it's all part of the whole thing. It, it all has this whole integrity to it. Um, But when you find that you're doing things outside in the world and they aren't working, you have to look at yourself and see, okay, because I'm able to affect the world and I'm putting things out there and they're falling apart, things that I do with my hands, okay, if this is happening over and over and over again, then you have to look back to where is the creation coming from? Mm -hmm. It's coming from right here. So... <laughs> If you just look here and you you fix things around, you don't even have the thing is you don't even have to fix things around. You just have to look. Yeah. Mm hmm Because the the um when you look inside, you become in tune with the infinite. When you look outside, you can become in tune with finite things. And one of the this is something I've experienced in my life. One of the qualities of the infinite is that it's able to synthesize information on its own. Mm -hmm. So if you're spending so much time outside with the finite, you're analyzing all these things and analysis is just you take the whole and you chop it up over and over again. And you're not spending time synthesizing life. You're going to be disorganized. And if you if you do this from zero to 25, you're going to have a breakdown
Oh, all way of us. smarter, way wiser. Way why? That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Infinite amount of finite distractions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An infinite amount. Right? Like, <laughs> I just came up yes. with that one. <laughs> no, that's, that's Seriously, exactly that's right. what it seems like. It's like this endless, endless distortion, endless delusion that one can get sucked into. It's wild. Yeah, man. But once one does go within and connects with the true infinite, mm -hmm. I feel as though the infinite works through you effortlessly. There is really just like a natural essence, a natural way of living that the infinite works through. And it's not like another thing. It's not like it's you and then the infinite. It's like you, yep. <laughs> you merge with the infinite and it, you just, you embody the infinite, you know? That's what I'm saying. It just, it has a way of slowly getting into you and it just takes over. Mm. It tells you what to do. It tells you what to eat, what to say, how to say it, yep. who to marry, who to stay away from, what to do for work. You know, <laughs> like people are, <laughs> people don't understand. We are, the whole life has intelligence across the whole system. The The life put intelligence inside of an ant, inside of a mountain inside of a tiger inside of everything mm -hmm. and you think life is just going to skip over humanity <laughs> exactly no it's not <laughs> oh, no it's man. not yeah so egocentric but we do that's the popular paradigm so that yeah. that's nature this is us <laughs> right it's separate things it's crazy yeah they it's they turned it into like this hierarchy thing this triangle thing instead of when it's supposed to be a circle Ooh, that's good yeah. It's supposed to be an ecosystem, not a, a heart. Yeah. That's powerful. Wow. Mm. And the, it's it's funny that you say that's so powerful, but that that's just a basic <laughs> understanding that we should <laughs> Yeah, like it shouldn't be powerful, right? It should just be apparent. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> that's just my opinion. But I mean if, if people hear this and like, wow, that's that's deep. I'm like, okay. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is deep to the mind. It's deep to the ego. But yes. In actuality, it's it's just how it is. It's just how it be. It just is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you say we tap into this? Is this through like regular meditation practice or things of that nature? I would say meditation. Meditation is just getting to the center of your being. I think meditation comes from word Medi, which means middle. I think that's where it comes from. Mm. But it's just just taking all of your attention, all of your ability to be aware that you're putting on the outside. You just take all of it and you put it this way. Yeah. And even people don't, I think most people don't understand this. They think um, when they say turn inward, they mean, oh, so I'm supposed to just watch my thoughts, right? Well, the thing is, even a thought is like an outward experience. If you go deep enough, you see yeah. even, a, even a thought is like something that comes out. It's, yeah. a, it's an expression. And all of the thoughts we have anyway, they, they come from the symbols of the outside. Because mm. we, we think, if we both speak the same language, so we probably both think in English. We got English, we got the whole vocabulary from somewhere outside. Yeah. But the only thing that we didn't pick up over time is the fact that we can see the fact that we have this awareness. So yes, when you try to go this way, yes, thoughts will come, visions will come, memories will come. But if you just stay at it for long enough, you'll find that all of those things subside. And then you're just left with the truth of what is, which is this very simple openness. There's no up or down. There's no excitement. There's, there's no love affairs. There's no drama. It's just quiet foundation. Yeah. Pure awareness. People are terrified of it because they, they've, they've put their sense of stability in the sensations themselves. So with, if they try to go somewhere where there's no sensations, it feels like they're dying. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. the last thing that the ego wants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how do you even say... Oh, sorry. Are you going to say something? No, go ahead. Go ahead. How do you even say we get on this wavelength? Um, like, 
how do we even believe that this is a thing, right? I feel like that's the hardest part is to know that what we're talking about isn't just us just BS and that this is actually real. When you go within and you feel it, you know it's real. So yeah. this is a pretty big question, but how do we lead people to believe that this is real? Is it possible or are some people going to make it, some people not going to make it type of thing? Yeah. <clears throat> Well, I, I think it fundamentally comes down to are you being entertained or not by the, the stimulation? Mm -hmm. um, but I would challenge people who say that this is an impossible thing or this is something I can't reach. I would challenge them to do, just do one simple thing. Just take your hand out like this and look at it and just open and close it. Oh, just open and close it. And then I would ask them who's doing that. Well, I'm doing that. It's like, whoa, okay. If I can open and close my hand consciously, that must mean that I'm beyond this body and I can influence it in some kind of way. So if I can influence it, I can see the body, this must mean I'm at a place that must be beyond the body. Yeah. Because if, say for example, like a lot of people like to play video games, If you have a character on the screen, you're controlling the character with the Xbox controller. You don't have to sit there and think, am I really controlling this character in this video game? Or <laughs> is the character on the screen real? No, you just obviously, I'm here, and the character is moving around. I'm controlling him in the game. So this is the same thing. If, if you take the time to just be still for a second, And you do a simple thing just as consciously moving your body this way and that way, just very subtle and slowly. You'll just, you'll have this knowing that this is, I have influence over this physical thing. And it's hard to see for someone who has made an identity out of not being in control of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So to come to this point of awareness, you do have to let a lot of things you might have held dear die. You might have to let them dissolve into truth. And I, I think that's, well, that is why most people don't do it. Yeah. To be blunt about it. Like mm. I've like me personally, I've had to change a lot. I've had to let things go that I held dear. I had, I had to change my, the way I eat. the way I stand, the way I speak. I had to be alone for a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there's, um, there's a, if you've been lighting your life up with illusions for so long and you want to get to the truth, you, you're, you're going to have to go through some darkness for a little bit because you've been mm -hmm. accumulating it over time. Mm -hmm. But once you get to the other side of that, once you go through the darkness, you get to the real light that you don't have to keep flicking on and off. It just, it just stays on yeah. no matter what. Mm. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Be still and numb. Exactly. It's so simple. It's so simple, man. It's hidden in plain sight. Mm -hmm. Now, do you say in some way that the darkness is what brings us to the light? Over and over again, we try to find the light in the darkness. And it never really adds up, right? Like we just keep suffering in one way or the other. So do you think the darkness, the struggle is what brings us potentially, not always, but the opportunity is there to bring us into this knowing, into this seeing? You know, it's like you have to reach a breaking point in a certain way to be able yes. to see this. Yeah. Yes, because in the beginning I said, If you build a structure without integrity, it's going to fall. Yeah. So the suffering we experience is essentially the sensation of the structures we're building being destroyed because they, they can't withstand the natural forces of life. So every time things fall apart, that is the best opportunity. We yeah. need to look and say, what did I do wrong? Not what was me, what was me. Mm. I've had, along my spiritual path i mean there was ups and downs and times i got distracted and times i was focused but what's brought me to this state of just consistent focus now is because 
a lot of things were not going well. Like I was in a relationship for a long time. And I really loved the girl. I still do. And I just messed up really bad. And I just looked at myself and said, okay, I understand that I can be, I can be still here. I can be peaceful here, but I need to put a, a handle on what things are happening outside of my experience. Cause I, I think a lot of spiritual, a lot of people who are on the spiritual path, they ignore the logistics of the world because they want to be so inwardly focused. And I, I think a lot of people don't speak about the dangers of using meditation as like escapism from your, your human responsibilities. Yeah. And essentially that's what I was doing for a long time. And then it just got to a point where it was just all in my face. Like, bro, you need to clean this up. Like you need to get to the bottom. You need to go get all this dirt out, scoop it out and then start over. And that's what I've been doing mm -hmm. pretty much. And um, life will, if you're sensitive, life will give you just a tap, just say, go this way. Yeah. If you're a little bit more dense, life will smack you on the wrist and say, you should go this way. Yeah. If you're even more dense, life is going to get a, a bot of boiling water and say, you need to get this together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So there's, it, it depends how, um, what is the word? It depends how easily you detect it, whether or not um, the punishment will be. Like the punishment is directly correlated to how um, sensitive or less sensitive you are. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. You can call it punishment or a lesson. A lesson. <laughs> right? A lesson. Yeah. Either way, there's this seeing that life, as you say, the universe maybe God, it's conspiring for your own good, contrary yes. to popular belief. It's actually everything is working to help you yeah. grow, essentially. Everything. Yeah. This is a school. Mm -hmm. It's earth school. This, this is earth school. Mm -hmm. This is like, maybe if, if we're multidimensional beings and we just stopped here in eighth grade and we're just humans in this dimension, there's things we have to learn and maybe we'll go to the next one and there's lessons in the next one. We have yeah. different forms and there's different rules and different compulsions. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either, <laughs> but it does feel very school like because there is some kind of yes. curriculum, right? It definitely seems like that. There is an essence of learning here. It's interesting. Go ahead, yeah. I was just going to say, if you don't learn, you just suffer over and over again. Exactly. So. It's that simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you want to wise up and not suffer? Yeah, that's what the school is for, essentially, to awake us out of our own suffering that we created, yes. essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it's interesting because there is an essence of us that can recognize so much empowerment and being able to tap in with the infinite. So much power comes from it, right? So much just will to live just a whole different will but then mm -hmm. also there's a humbleness to it yeah. on the other side of the coin there's like also humbling yourself and knowing that we might be in eighth grade and there's a few more levels so there's a simultaneous like there's a simultaneous holiness but also a simultaneous yeah. groundedness to mm -hmm. this essence that we're speaking of yes i agree and yeah. people the the spiritual path is so interesting there's so many kinds of people and expressions on it and I've, I've seen that when people they know a little bit and they go kind of halfway they they get these spiritual egos about oh, they, yeah. they know everything and they want to teach all the time and they don't want people to make their own mistakes that's only one level of it but the higher you go the higher it's like this is way bigger than me mm -hmm. this is this is like you just you feel how what is the word minuscule your 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 intellect is yeah seriously and when you when you see how stupid you've been being relative to the intelligence of life you just want to shut up you, you <laughs> naturally just want to shut up and stop thinking <laughs> at least for me <laughs> so that's interesting yeah i know what you mean but then why do you go online and speak on this stuff right 
<laughs> that's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> what is it in you that compels you to shut up, but also say, "Hey, man, I gotta, I gotta talk about this." Life tells me to shut up and pay attention, and then I develop the lesson. And then when life will tell me, "Okay, this is this is good to go." Now people need to hear this. Mm -hmm. Then I go out and I do it. Yeah. And this is why when I do it, I'm speaking for about an hour. I'm making all kinds of points from all different directions. It's because like I'm trying to pay as much attention to this as I can. And I'm trying to put holes in my own logic and my own reasoning. Yeah. And then when I get to the point where it's like, all right, this is solid. Then it comes, it gets to the point where it's like overflowing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all right, now I want to share this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because um, I, th I think um, that's actually a very good question. I think teachers do this because they feel so much joy and abundance with understanding these principles to the point where it's like the pressure of it becomes almost too much. And the, the natural tendency is just to give it away. Yeah. Just yeah. give it away. And... And and I also think that's why we're here on this earth school is is not only to learn things but to to share things as well. Mm -hmm. And I've I've found that when I share things out loud and I teach it, it actually synthesizes the information more in my in my brain in my mind. And I've actually developed like more of a solid character throughout just doing YouTube, mm -hmm. even doing this. So I I, th I think that's just a part of the evolution is, is eventually becoming a teacher. Yeah, I think so too. You got to give back a little bit. What'd you say? You got to give back a little bit. That's yeah. how I feel, right? But also yeah. retaining the student. Always the student, but at the same time, teaching or sharing, you know? Exactly. Mm. And I feel that. There's so many people who I feel like need it too. Because there, there was a time when, you know, I, I had my natural wisdom about me, but I still had this like burning desire to learn more. So I would be on YouTube for hours listening mm -hmm. to all kinds of gurus and teachers and That was great. That was a good time. But now I'm at a point where it's like, okay, I, I pretty much know what they're going to say at this point. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I, need, I need to be one of those people on the screen now. Yeah. It's, it's just like you just graduate. It's like different levels within the school. Yeah. Yeah, man. Mm. Who are your teachers? Do you have any specific people that you are attuned to? Yeah. Said Guru was a huge, he had a huge impact on my life. Seguru, Muji, Ramdas. I think, I mean, I think these are people who we're all aware of if you're really into the um, self awareness. Alan Watts. Um, even people back in the day, the people like Socrates. Mm -hmm. I really like Socrates because he wouldn't write anything down. Yep. He would just be. <laughs> uh huh. You'd be like this living library, this living lie detector. I just thought that was so cool. He even, because we were saying in the beginning, like these symbols are taking over our minds. And even he saw that and was like, all right, I know I'm spitting all this wisdom and stuff, but I still don't know anything. So I'm not going to write anything down. And it's not that important. But people, when they were listening to him, said, no, we need to save this. Like when you get yeah. to a point where you're just talking and talking and, You yourself think it's simple, but other people are like, no, people need to hear this. It's like, okay, I, I think it's time to, to um, share it, you mm -hmm. know, because like I've I've been, I've been on this way for a long time, and you know, I've I've had conversations just in in talking in the moment with me sharing insight, and it's like time after time after time, people are like, that was valuable. I needed that, so it's eventually I'm like, well, I guess this is what I got to do. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Have you experienced that as well? Like do you do you um encounter people that are lost in some way and you give them insight? Like do do people detect that you you have this wisdom about yourself? I think so. Yeah. Um I think so. Uh but I don't I don't think about it like that. You know, I don't think like, oh, they need my wisdom. Um, yeah. I do think it's just natural, you know, because I feel that in others. So I'm like, there's got to be others that feel that in me too. 
Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. People have made comments about me calling me their guru or saying, asking mm-hmm. if I'm a bodhisattva and stuff like that. So <laughs> I, yeah, I sense that. But if you get caught up in that a little too much, then it can become another trap. You exactly. don't want that. So for sure. Exactly. Yeah. I think it just comes along the way, but that's another, that's another, um, part of learning is like how to teach without being the teacher right retaining the student as you're teaching somebody that's tricky right it's tricky yeah because then the ego is very pesky it'll try to get involved and i'm uh a yoga teacher as well like physical asana yoga and that is right there that's a big test right you're literally the teacher in front of you know 20 people and it's like how can i retain the humbleness while um, these people are literally being instructed by my voice in a physical way. So that is like, it's a weird um, thing to tow. It's a weird line that you have to walk, but um, yeah, the answer your question for sure, but it's just another lesson, right? Being the teacher is just another lesson. It's it's part (laughs) of the curriculum. It's part of the curriculum, man. But one of the things I do to, to not get so deep into the teacher thing, is I'll spend time with people who don't care about spirituality at all. And we can just have a regular conversation just about things in life. And in that way, there's not people around me who are all the time asking me questions. It's like, being a regular human being outside of all this is also just as important, in my experience, at least. Yeah, very true. Mm. Pumping your gas, paying your bills, like, just little things like that. Yeah. Like small talk. Exactly. Yeah, because no one likes an evangelical person in any way. So it's like bring that essence into the normal, the normalcy, right? It's still like retaining that integrity amongst the normalcy. The stuff that doesn't seem spiritual, quote unquote, actually is spiritual. And that's another lesson, too, that comes along the way. (laughs) A lot of people don't understand that. No, no. We want to skip, like, we want to skip over the mundane and get straight to the mystical stuff because that's all the, that's the exciting stuff. Mm. But if if you can, if you can go grocery shopping with as much attention as you go, as you meditate, you'll find you have an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. You'll see so many things. Yeah. I think uh, you said it in a recent video. You're, you want to make your life a meditation, right? Yes. Eventually, that's where it leads, I feel, is we are the meditation itself. And no matter <laughs> what the appearance is on the outside, whatever yeah. happens, whatever the circumstances, you are seated in this sanctuary of peace, this integrity. It's a great word. I don't think I've ever used integrity to talk about this stuff. This is the first time. I like that a lot, this integrity within, no matter what is without. Mm-hmm. That's truly it is truly man powerful stuff yeah it's it's a beautiful way to live i like what you said about how it just that's all what it comes to because i've realized that too that all right i'm i'm doing different things i'm experimenting with different techniques and different ways of even philosophy mm. and i'm getting to the point where it's like no i, I literally just need to meditate as long as i can <laughs> And things will be fine. Yeah, exactly. Things will be good. And you mean not, well, do you mean like literal meditation sessions or what we talked about before? Like we no, meditate just, as long as I can, no matter what happens? Yeah, just yeah. um, first of all, like you, you establish that deep meditation with your eyes closed sitting. And then the key is just to, if you're able to walk up and get around, have conversations and do your work and talk to people in that same state of meditation, it's like that's that's like the real mm-hmm. advanced practice. Yeah, I would say. I agree. And one may think that doesn't know any better that why would I want to be in this sort of la la land meditative state, right? It doesn't really make much sense to the mind. Yeah, but it actually, I feel as though helps everything in all facets mm-hmm. of life, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't lead to a sense of passiveness or naivety. It's actually like it helps one flourish being in this meditative state. I agree. Because when you're, 
when you're meditative, you you see the truth, and you see what needs to be done. So yeah. I I like what you said about how it's not passive because, for example, let's say you're in a country where the laws are corrupt, the the government is out of line, things are just falling apart. If you're meditative, you're not going to sit back and just be like, "Oh, this is fine." You're gonna you're gonna get in there and rebel. Mm -hmm. With all of your heart, everything you have, you're going to be, you can be aggressive and meditative at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can yeah. protect your family and be meditative. You can get into a fight and be meditative. I think the best fighters do have a sense of meditation about them For sure. For while sure. they're in the ring. Mm -hmm. But people yeah. are just, they're, they're looking at the surface and they're seeing them throw their fists and, and, and uh, growl and things. And it's like, no, very deep within them, they're chilling. They're stoic. Otherwise, exactly. they wouldn't be that good. Exactly, man. Yeah. So true in fighting, for sure. Yeah, if you're in the moment, you're almost like transcending time. I feel like all physical sports are actually like that, yeah. too. You got to be like in the moment, in tune with whatever's going on. Everything. Yeah. Music, especially, too. Like when you're... Everything. Literally everything. When you're everything. here and your mind isn't out there thinking about the future or the past, when you're here, mm -hmm. truly, you can create magic. Just mm -hmm. beauty comes from it. Creative. Mm -hmm. Creative aspects are infinite when you tap into the infinite. Exactly. Yeah, man. Because it's it's beyond the memory. So like even mm. there was a there was a woman who who a sprinter who was in the Olympics and she ran so fast that she was out of the frame from the rest of the people. Mm. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking the whole race, there's no way you're going to be able to run that fast, far ahead, because you're thinking, oh, no one's done that before. There's no precedent of that. My coaches said I couldn't do that. But if you get in that, those blocks, and you hear the gun go off, and you're just running as fast as you can, you have no limitations on how fast your muscles can move. You don't know how fast you can run. Mm -hmm. There's records that have been broken by people who are not thinking about nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like superpowers. People have like, I, don't, I haven't seen this in person, but I've heard when people get in like tense situations, like say their significant other stuck under a car, they have the ability to lift the car up. Mm. What is that? People who get into these states of survival and I don't know, there's a bear running after them and somehow they get away and they have this almost superhuman courage to protect their family from a bear. Like I heard this story online about some guy who lived in a cabin with his wife and some bears were, you know, trying to get to him. There was like three bears. I don't condone killing, but this is this is just what he had to do in that moment. Like he he got his gun. He went out there. He went after the bears to make sure they didn't come back. Mm -hmm. That is like courage that is like supreme courage yeah to know that you're gonna go out there and face an apex predator yeah <laughs> how what are you thinking about you can't be thinking about anything not thinking about anything you're thinking of well you're not thinking about you're feeling what needs to be done exactly. i think you said it it's like you realize with this higher wisdom what needs to be done there's a higher discernment that comes about that the mind can't really compute doesn't really comprehend this yeah. higher wisdom this higher intelligence that will just yeah. direct and guide one toward the best suitable action it's less yeah. of a reaction more of a mature response you could yes. say mm -hmm. truly truly it's not magic man it seems like magic but this is actually real <laughs> that's what i'm saying like we we're mystifying the most basic things yeah about being human i wish we would stop I wish we would stop too, man. <laughs> I think we'll get there. I mean, the times we're in are very interesting to say the least, but the times we're in, I think, are leading us to that, to this essence, to this state of presence naturally. Mm -hmm. Some it's going to take a little bit longer than other others, but just the fact that we're having this conversation, I've had this conversation with other people over 200 times from all over the world leads me to believe that something's going on there's something yeah. happening right mm -hmm. compare this to 100 years ago 100 years ago is like the dark ages like right, right yeah. now truly it may seem if you just turn on fox news and cnn it may yeah. seem a little bleak and confused and distorted but i think behind the scenes 
there is a revolution of consciousness going on, you could say, that is, um, it seems slow, but I think it's actually exponentially growing at this point. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way because even in my community, I'm in the, the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. There's all kinds of events and leaders just popping up out of nowhere just wanting to share information that it wasn't here 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, we we have this liberating technology, this this liberating, um, what is the word, like decentralized technology of yeah. being being able to uh, distribute all of this knowledge. Like we we live in a we live in an age where you could be as wise as as you could be, but you could also be as distracted as ever. Yep. So I I think it's just knowing knowing how to use the times that we're in and not getting caught in it. Exactly. Don't have the time to use you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a double-edged sword, this technology that we have. Yes, it is. Like right now, we're using a computer to, you know, grow our wisdom. But some people are using that same computer to escape from all their problems. Mm -hmm. The same computer. Mm -hmm. It's on how we use it. <laughs> it's on how we use it, man, for sure. Yeah. And I think on the topic of conversation well, if you go in more it'll direct you not only in your life and stuff that goes on but also how you use the technology for sure yeah right you know how many times i've actually i'm not gonna lie i'm not perfect i've got caught in the ignorance the stupidity online i'm like what? me too right i'm just me like too. this is like what come on but then i tune into stuff like alan watts and ram das or having talks with people like you and i'm like yeah right mm -hmm. that resonance is very prevalent when we use the technology. So the more you go within and the more you use technology, they go hand in hand, right? It's not like separate things, it's separate nope. entities. Same it all thing. relates. It's the same thing. Yeah. The, um, my opinion of, of these computers that have come out of thin air, like where, where did the idea of a computer even come from? I don't the, know, man. <laughs> the aliens. That's a mystery something. in itself. Yeah. But I think, I think the, a computer is just like, the intellect's version of of consciousness because it's this it's yeah. all these individuals which is a computer and then it's connected by this web of the internet and there's all these applications on this one device that's a screen but when you look at yourself you go deep enough and you see okay all of this is just kind of it's not a screen but it's like this it's just this openness and when it's interesting when we turn these computers off that's just a black screen there's mm. nothing there Mm -hmm. but when you turn it on, there's all these lights and these sounds, and these, it's it's the same thing as this experience. Like when you when you go this way, you shut everything off; it's just black. Yeah. But you open your eyes. I'm in a body. I have skin. I have face. And there's all these people. There's all these things I could do, and you just pe people just get caught in the applications mm. of life. They yeah. <laughs> people don't. They never want to turn the phone off and see what. what What's behind the mechanics of, of this device? Yeah. Yeah. Right? What's uh what's making us move? What's making us tick? The electricity. I mean, literally electricity. We do have electricity. We are just uh we actually are just robots and computers in a certain way. The body is. By electricity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the technology that we've built is sort of a crude and rudimentary form of us it's just an extension of what we are exactly yeah and the internet altogether is just like a rudimentary form of our consciousness or the collective consciousness mm -hmm. altogether yeah i yeah. feel that man a two-dimensional form yeah it's just like a symbol for really what we are altogether what technology mm -hmm. is you yeah. know i feel that when i come on here with people like i feel even though we are literally using technology past that we are connected at a, a level where I feel as though if we really connected right now, we said, all right, we're going to, with the intention took a little bit of time, we could connect without this technology. I know that seems crazy, but I think the internet is just showing us that there actually is an innate internet. And I feel that yeah. through the internet. Am I making sense right now? No, I I totally agree because <clears throat> I've, I feel connections with people who are not here. They they could be 
across the country and i i feel this something's going on it's like we why do we have these like visions about someone and we call them yep. and the other person was like i was just thinking about you mm -hmm. it's like that come on that's not a coincidence no no it's like way. there's there's an the internet here there's a there's a uh inner network mm -hmm. that, that people need to tap into because just like the internet there's information that you can use to improve your life there's information here also that you can use mm. and I, I think the information here is is better because it's it's more specific to your life when you go out there you you consume information but that's all from other people's accounts and other people's stories yeah I agree yeah I think the outward information as in all of the stuff of the internet should if it's a valid teaching lead you to you right yes. the best direction is back home <laughs> every time yeah every time. <laughs> yeah if not every then it's just time. another distraction <laughs> every single time every time i go deep into something it's always like oh turn around mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. single without fail yep i've gone deep into business i've gone deep into astrology i've gone deep into philosophy psychology logistics everything it every time this way every single time yep <laughs> again so simple yeah <laughs> every valid teaching i say does that every valid teacher Every true guru brings you to the sad guru within. Yes. And when teachers are, are telling you, no, I'm, you need to listen to me. Stay away from them. Run away. Mm -hmm. Stay far away because they're trying to manipulate you and they want power yeah. and they're ignorant. They're ignorant <laughs> and yeah. dangerous. Dangerous. Like people, people have committed the worst atrocities. Because they got on some pulpit and they started talking, mm. saying, "You need to listen to me." Mm -hmm. like, um, this is a gruesome example, but the Holocaust, Hitler, Hitler had this incredible charisma. He was a you know, terrible man, but he had this inner power that that was just moving so many people. And why didn't all these people look to themselves and say, "This is not right." How did he get so many people to listen to him? Power. Because all the what'd you say? Power. Power, man. He he was channeling some kind of power from somewhere else, and everyone else was just hypnotized by it. Yeah. I think that's the thing. People just get I mean, it's hypnosis. That's what it is. Mm. Mm -hmm. Spells. People mm. people people who know how to speak know how to cast spells and they just hypnotize people. Yeah. Quite literally, too. It's not just like a hyperbole. Oh, I think that's like actually what's happening. Yeah. Mm. It's literally what's going on. With great power comes great responsibility. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I, I love when I, like channels like this, I love when I hear people saying, no, you need you just need to turn around. Like, I'm, I'm not a big deal. All right? I'm just, I say a few words, but really, if, if you just look this way, you wouldn't need to listen to me at all. Yep. Truly. I like to say that every teaching is just a reminder to do that. That's all it is. It's just a reminder. That's it. But um, I think people, it's, it's an impersonal experience to turn around. And I think there's a lot of people who just want comfort of, of that social interaction. Um, and even if the answer is within you, they still want to talk to another person because that compulsion to be with a tribe is it's like this primal survival instinct. So people just, no matter what, you could tell them the plain truth and they'll still do what they were doing before. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Well, it's kind of what we're doing right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the irony. Yeah. Some kind of joke in there. Yeah. Right? It's like we can never really... All we can say, truly, 
is go within. You can never really talk about what this within is, what the infinite is. Yeah. But yet, you can't stop talking about it. Nope. <laughs> At least I can. Yeah. It's so it's the most interesting thing. Yeah. It's so interesting. I can't help but talk about it. <laughs> right. No, it's like I, I've if I've I've seen it so I can't go back. Mm. Even if I wanted to. Yeah. It's like the Matrix when they got plugged, the the plug came out. Like you could go back, but now you have this awareness that I'm not really in the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, the I would always have a longing to go back to that authentic experience. Yep. Once you take the red pill. Yes. Can't go back. Have you had any um like non physical experiences? that you you like saw behind the curtain in oh, yeah. a sense. Oh yeah. That's from psychedelics. Magic mushroom use. Yeah. High dose mm -hmm. magic mushroom use by yourself. Yeah, you'll have an extraordinary experience to say the least. Mm -hmm. But also through meditation. Mm -hmm. Um but my first glimpse you could say behind the curtain, seeing Oz was through using magic mushrooms in a responsible way. Love what you said about that. In a responsible <laughs> way. Yeah, responsible. <laughs> you got to be responsible. Yeah, because people use that to escape as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything can be an escape. Anything. Anything. Even the things you think are freeing you are actually entrapping you. So you have to be diligent in one's practice because the practice can be an escape in itself. It can be another trap. Yep. Yeah. Totally agree. And I, I think I was using, because I, I have this, at this point in my life, I have this affinity for solitude and isolation. And it's comfortable. But I think, well, I mean, life has been telling me you, the next step of your growth is going to be being out in public, being, being a teacher. Because like what we were saying before, it, it, it synthesizes the information when you teach. Um, so the the comfort of being in a meditative attitude long hours of the day alone that was becoming a sort of trap mm. in a way mm -hmm. and it's like the same well let me use this analogy because I heard this like I think two months ago when you're on a, a journey there's going to be different terrains across the entire journey and at one point you might need a boat to cross the river, but at some point the river is going to end if you keep going straight. So you just, you can't take the boat and carry it with you on the land. Even if you love that boat, maybe you made it from the bottom up. There's going to be a point where the, the boat's just going to be useless. You got to yeah. keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that before. I think that's a Buddhist saying. I've heard that. It might be. Yeah. You got to let go of the boat. What you, <laughs> you gotta let go of the boat yeah yeah but i think that is like a metaphor for the dharma i'd like to find the real quote maybe i'll do that post-production and put it up but it's okay. like they use the uh the boat is the dharma like you need the boat to a certain extent mm -hmm. you need the the teachings to a certain extent to get you so far but like you said the river reaches an end and then you got to go on to the next part of the journey for sure yeah, yeah. And the journey never ends that's the beauty of it right it never ends. That's, that is the coolest thing about this game is that it's never going to end. Yeah. It's never going to end. But some people, they even after they reach the level, like they get across the river, even they see that the river's over, they might want to go back and do it again. Yeah. It's fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, the story of the wanderer or the bodhisattva. It's like... um. I know that's the story of Alan Watts is, has a famous talk where he says like picture you could do whatever you want you are the infinite you are limitless you could dream whatever you want into existence at this point in this very moment mm. right picture that right now you're just you're, you're God pretty much well if you could do that mm. then you would be exactly where you are <laughs> right here right now yeah. because eventually infinity would get old and you would want to work with limitations Right. Yeah. Limitations yeah. are part of the journey. They're part of the 
the hero's journey. They're part of the adventure to work through our limitations in order to um, play the game, essentially, right? Because every good game has challenge, right? <laughs> no one likes cheat codes in a game or God mode that gets old. You like to transcend exactly. challenges in different levels, right? So exactly. I think that's kind of what we're talking about here. Yeah. That's a great point. And it never ends. Like we said, it only gets more and more novel too. Like it only, it may seem scary, right? To, to someone that has no idea that, oh, it never ends. That's samsara in Eastern philosophy. Oh, it never ends. But that's like, it never ends, but there's always more novelty upon the journey. Like it never ends, but it's not like repetitious, if that makes sense. Like there's, yeah. I can't like the words can't really I can't really yeah, convey it to a point where you can't speak about it. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens. But yeah, it never ends, but it's always novel and magnificent. It's always beautiful. Right. Never ending novelty, I guess, is what I could say to that. I agree with that. Yeah. And I think part of the novelty comes from the fact that your your awareness can become so refined that you just pick up on different information and different sensations like day after day after day you, you see new things every day like even i have a steady routine now and essentially i'm in a samsara to, to know you know keep the keep my shelter up and um what is it finance my business and there's just other things i like to do so you do have to go in a certain cycle but as you go through the cycle you can you can go around around and around physically but i found energetically as you go around and around you you at the same time become more and more subtle if you do the same circle again but you do it better and mm. you do it better you do it better you do it better and you see more and more and more each day and for me that's that is that has probably been the main joy of of this is um experiencing more of what i have now like you, you guys see my room right now. There's nothing on the walls because like I don't need it. It's just mm -hmm. what what I'm focused on is, is like accumulating uh, energy, accumulating more attention. Like of course the the money and things will come, but this you, you, it's it's more valuable than the non physical things are way more valuable. Oh yeah, priceless. They're priceless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It becomes secondary. There is a higher pursuit, right? I know what you mean. Yeah. Because everyone's pinnacle right now. The main thing of the popular paradigm is get to get money, right? That's the highest of the highest pursuit that one could strive for. It's money, materialism. But on this wavelength that we're speaking on, it doesn't negate that stuff for sure. Yeah, we fine. just realize that there's a little bit more going on. There's a little <laughs> bit higher um, yeah. purpose to life. You could yeah, say, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it becomes like people's goals. The popular goals just become accessories at some point. People are, if you pay so much attention to the accessories, you will you will ignore the the thing that you need to put the accessory on to even show it <laughs> off in the first place, which is yourself, which is yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You could walk in, you know, you could have robes of gold and drive a Ferrari. But if you're not aware and you're not a joyful human being, it doesn't matter how you look. No one's going to like you. Mm -hmm. Life's not going to like you. Like we, we get like people want to get hearts and likes on Facebook and Instagram. Like, no, you need to get a like from the universe. Like <laughs> life does give you ups and downs. In my experience, I will say. When I do certain things, it's like, okay, that was good. Good, keep that up. And then I'll do something wrong. And it's like, nope, that wasn't good. And mm. I'll, it's like a sensation of being light and dense. Have you had that experience? So it's like a, you're saying like a dance between light and dense, back and forth, the experience of life and working with that. Is that what you're saying? What I'm trying to say is like when, at least in my experience, when I do something that aligns with this path, I feel more, my energy feels more abundant and more light. Yeah. So for example, um, I eat a raw vegan diet currently 
but I used to eat meat and processed foods and all that kind of stuff. So life has given me a certain standard of living just by virtue of how I eat. Like I, I naturally have a certain um, lightness in my mind and my body and my emotions, like everything. But if I were to eat a burger today, life is going to make me sink, you know? Mm. And I'm, I'm going to have to come back up when it, when it burns off. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're saying in terms of light, if we look at this whole thing as light, it's just a matter of density yes and our energetic diet, whether it could be your literal diet or just the overall energetic diet that mm -hmm. one um, works with here. Mm -hmm. It's um, very telling. Like you just know there's that resonance yeah in, in how you decide to conduct yourself. Yeah. yeah I feel that. Mm hmm. And that's density, the I like that. Lightness or density, right? It's just a spectrum of lightness or density. that's all it is Mm. that's all it is and like hell what is hell it's just you you feel heavy You Yeah. you feel like you can't move. You you feel like you're not flexible. Yeah. You feel like life is against you. There's a weight on you. Literally, it's down, right? When we think of the archetype of hell, you look down. Yeah, you look down. <laughs> right. But if if we're because we are spiritual beings in this human experience, we have these bodies. That's a fact. But we should be living with. a sense of being above the earth in a way like we, we can walk in these bodies, but still, what is the word? Have a little distance from everything to, Mm hmm to keep yourself from the, the gravity of natural forces. mm hmm And that that's, that's pretty much why I do everything like that. If we could sum this whole conversation down into, into one simple idea is that the game is becoming more and more subtle over time with just everything that you do. yeah And then the more subtle you become, eventually you get to this point where you become like the mist and then you become nothing. wow. That's And good. then that's it. That's it. We don't know <laughs> what's after that. That's good stuff. Then we can be, What'd you say? we can be in the world and not of it. Yes. Mm. You can sit here in this body and in this mind, but you don't have to be tangled by it. You don't have to be a prisoner to it. You can, you can sit here and feel absolutely free. You don't need a big house. You don't need a bunch of friends. Those things would be nice, but you... Play the right game. That's all I'm trying to say. Mm. Mm. Just play the right game. Mm. You'll have a great time. <laughs> Amen to that, man. <laughs> I think it's a good note to wrap this up at. yeah, wow, that would flew by. Right? Do you have anything else you want to say? You want to keep it at that? Um, I just appreciate you for watching my YouTube channel and picking up on what I have to say and inviting me on. I'm honored that you invited me on here to... I'm honored to have you, for sure. You're a real one, man. Seriously, keep doing your thing. I think many, many people will resonate with you in the future. So keep doing your thing. I resonate at least. <laughs> so That means a lot, man. I'm just trying to play the game. Play the right game. That's play all. the right game. Yeah. <laughs> Playing the right game. I like that. Well, yeah, thank you for coming on here. Like I said, I wish you all the best. And thanks to anybody that listened this long. That's it. Yes, thank you out there. I hope you guys learned something. I learned something in this talk just by what you said. So I appreciate you sharing your Right back insight. at you, man. Mm -hmm. Integrity. It's about integrity. Yes, yes, sir. That's what it's <laughs> that's what it's about. well, thank you, Nicholson. I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Peace and love to you. And peace and love to the listener. Yes, sir. Goodbye, y'all. Peace.